Hello everyone, welcome to my review for the Bontrager Ballista Nips Road Cycling Helmet. Now, I've had this helmet for two months I think. Uh, so basically in June I had a bad accident and my Giro synth was totaled in that. So I was looking for something a little bit different, something a little bit more aero and something that fit ever so slightly better on my rather large head. So found this it was 105 pounds from sigma sports so quite cheap for a, an aero helmet really um and i'm pretty impressed with it so let's uh, get into the details and we can uh, see what i think of it the first thing that's worthy of note with this helmet is that the fact that there isn't a non-mips version to compare it to so it's not that say you're spending an extra 20 30 pounds on um, just on the MIPS alone because there is no non-MIPS version and it's hard to say whether if it didn't have MIPS whether it would be as good of a helmet or not um, and I don't really want to uh, try and tempt a, a child on a bike out into the road with me travelling at 30 miles an hour again just to test how well the MIPS works uh, it's yeah I just don't want to do that so I think with the MIPS a lot of so we're placing a lot of faith in the manufacturers that they and the science behind it they understand that it it must make a difference after all it is essentially a piece of plastic that kind of moves around a little bit so it's yeah it, it's hard for me to say and sit, sit here and say oh yeah mips is amazing it, it does an amazing job because i'm not equipped to understand how um, how it can work um, the manufacturers and the, the people who invented MIPS are the, are the ones to, to really grill on that, whether we can get any solid scientific data um, to prove that it works. Not sure, but I think just for kind of peace of mind as well, you, you, th you think it might make a difference just in that one in a million accident that you might have. Uh, it, could, it could make a difference and uh, save your brain from some serious injury. Uh, the difference between... a uh, 30 pound helmet let's say uh, from Lidl or um, a 100, 100 pound plus helmet such as this is likely to be very very negligible in terms of the protection that it offers because uh, any helmet that's sold within the EU has to conform to the let me just check this <laughs> CEEN 1078 safety standard so you're gonna get the same baseline protection from a cheap helmet as you are an expensive helmet. The differences between a cheap helmet and the expensive helmet is the way it looks, the way it fits, and any performance gains such as aerodynamic uh, savings that you can make. So it's not something that particularly bothers me. You know, I, I'd be happy riding around in a thirty-pound helmet, but I want something that looks a little bit a bit nicer um, and. I suppose with the MIPS, there is that perhaps slightly uh, added protection, which which does ease my mind slightly. Looks-wise, I'm very happy with uh, with the Ballista. I think it's hard for me normally to find a helmet that looks all right because my head, as you can probably see, is rather large. And what I find with most helmets is that they don't tend to fit too well and they can kind of almost exaggerate the size of my head. Whereas I find with this that it actually doesn't do too bad. I mean, my head is never going to look small, especially from the side. But I think really, because especially because it's got the, the sort of the aero cool look as well, it, um, it, it doesn't look too bad on, on me. It's quite a sort of a long and thin profile instead of being a, a more rounded mushroom style helmet like say the cask Personi, for example um, that probably would look absolutely ridiculous on my head do also like that there is the um, quite long tail at, at the back of the helmet it, it obviously it, whether it makes any performance uh, gains i'm not sure but it, it just it looks quite cool uh, obviously it's more of a, a vanity thing for me really because i like obviously i've got the like the all black look on the bike it's a nice all black helmet uh, it's just an, a nice profile and the front as well it kind of sticks out a little bit more now i think i've got this in somewhere so i'll try and sort of capture this to compare it but the front lip of this sticks out quite away over uh, over your eyebrows and 
with the synth, it didn't stick out quite as far. So I think that's one of the reasons why my face ended up taking so, so much of the impact when I had my accident, uh, because it just doesn't seem to offer that same level of uh, front frontal protection, whereas this just sticks out a little bit more. If I'd have had this on, maybe I might have not lost a tooth or something like that, but obviously it's, it's hard to be too critical uh, of the synth because it did probably save me from a much more serious injury. Now, with regards to the way that the helmet fits, I am largely very impressed with it, and I think it, it probably fits one of the best helmets that, um, that I've ever had. However, there are a couple of slight things with it. So, with the adjustment dial on the back, you can adjust it from, say, 58 down up to 63 centimeters, so depending on the size of your head. For me, personally, I can't find the sweet spot with this. It's either too tight and I get headache after, a few, uh, let's say, half an hour or so of, of wearing it, or it's too loose. And when I'm riding on the typically rough uh, roads around here, it's not, the helmet just feels like it's, it's wobbling around on my head like that, which obviously isn't ideal because in the event of a crash, it's probably just going to fly off. So I haven't yet been able to find that happy, happy medium of a, a nice secure fit, but without like, a death grip on your head. So that's one thing I'm slightly disappointed with, but it's not um, discrediting the, the overall impressions that I have with this helmet. With regards to the performance gains with this helmet, obviously a, a cheap one from, uh, from a little uh, supermarket called Lidl, um, it's hard for me to notice any real difference. So I've had uh, a Cask Mojito and the Giro Synth prior to this helmet and I can't notice any difference. If there is a difference, it's probably gonna be like one or two watts, something trivial like that. Obviously, I don't have a wind tunnel to go and test this uh, this helmet out with versus other ones, so it's hard to be too scientific with things. I suppose there is the, the sort of the element of it. It feels nice, so maybe you might, and you think it's aero, so you might ride a little bit harder to go a bit faster, but there's no real tangible uh, performance gain at all. I suppose they probably claim there will be, whether there is in the real world, I can't say. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has sort of really independently verified that there are any, any gains. Um, because obviously there are still vents on this helmet, so the, the air does flow through. It's just that it's not quite as vented as uh, perhaps some of the other non-aero helmets. Um, I think for the everyday cyclist, it's unlikely to make any real difference at all. Uh, another thing as well, the helmet can be quite hard to, to get sat straight on your head, especially sort of when you put the straps on, sometimes it can go ever so slightly wonky. Now, typically, probably on this shot, it's on dead straight, but quite often I'll sort of get back from my ride and I'll, I'll look in, uh, in my reflection in the window and the helmet will be like that and I've not really realised that it, it's gone uh, skewed with, so it can look a little bit silly, but again, it's a very minor thing and I think a lot of people can struggle to, to get a helmet they'll sit straight so everybody's heads are different mine is especially different because it's so uh, so large but I would be a little happier if it just stayed more flush uh, but obviously with not being able to tighten it to the right sort of tension for me to hold it in place it's um it's a bit of a niggle but it doesn't it doesn't bother me too much really I've been riding with my 100% Speedcraft glasses that are from China um, and I've found there is absolutely no interference with, uh, with the helmet at all. The, strap, the, the arms of the glasses fit nicely underneath uh, the side of the helmet and despite this, this lip being quite large on the front, there's no interference with the vision uh, up here. So it, maybe if you have the, the helmet angled down quite a lot, you could ever so slightly see it in the, the top of your vision. But that's only going to be a real issue if you if you're staring down at the road and trying to look right up with uh, with your eyes. But for the vast majority of people, that's not going to be an issue at all. And I, I'm sure with most glasses as well, you won't have uh, have any issues with this because there's very very minimal um, strap in here to connect the uh, the tension dial to the rest of the helmet. So th there's not any real potential for interference there, which is. One thing that I have definitely noticed with this helmet versus the uh, the synth that I used to have and even the the, uh, the Casca Mojito before, that I had before that is the level of wind noise is a lot a lot lower 
So I find it's really good for, tra for traffic awareness, being able to hear things coming behind you. All right, it's not completely silent. There is going to be some wind noise, but I just find it slightly reduced so I can hear things coming a little more easily, which uh, given my sort of anxiety with, with riding since the accident, it's definitely, definitely helping me out. One thing I have found though with uh, this right strap here is it's quite it's quite long and despite my head also being quite long as well it's the strap is too long so I'm having to really uh, tighten it up almost to the point where it, it's hanging out too much so I think I might have to cut that off but it does also seem that this uh, rubber gripper here doesn't quite hold the strap tightly enough so it, it can sort of lose its tension ever so slightly but it's never getting to the point where it, the helmet's just going to slide off my head but perhaps if I had a say a 58 centimetre head uh, which is the minimum size for, for this helmet I'd have the strap like hanging all the way up here which wouldn't be good so I'd ha have to cut that um, but I suppose I can sort that out it's not uh, not too big of a deal really one thing to note with the black model is now I've deliberately left uh, this uncleaned is the potential for uh, fingerprints and sweat and other marks to, to show up. Hopefully the camera will pick them up there. Um, it's not a big deal because I suppose every colour is perhaps going to pick up a little bit of dirt, uh, especially if you went for a white one. Um, it's just something to bear in mind. You have to periodically wipe it to, to get rid of those, rid of those marks. It doesn't look too bad, I suppose, but um, I suppose if you don't like helmet cleaning, then you're going to uh, gonna perhaps want to go elsewhere because it it's a matte finish, so it does attract the fingerprints quite a lot, but it's not uh, not exactly the end of the world, really. So given that this helmet comes in quite a lot cheaper than, say, the likes of the S-Works Prevail uh, Aero helmet, I think that's about £160. This is less than 110 for something that looks relatively similar. I'm super impressed with it. There's a couple of niggles, but they're not exactly deal breakers for me. Um, while I really recommend this helmet, I would advise, as with any helmet, go and try it out in person if you can uh, before, before you buy it. Because, like I said, everybody's heads are different. Helmets are different in fit. So it's worth, worth trying it on before, uh, before you buy it if you can. But yeah, like I said, really recommend it. I'd be, uh, well, in fact, I've, I've seen quite a few people riding uh, with this and there's been a few people at uh, the races that I've done as well. So it's definitely increasing in popularity slightly and uh, it, it looks really nice as well. Although I suppose it's quite a personal preference to me. I do like the, uh, the aero helmet look. Some people probably don't, but I think in a, a time where a lot of people are, are riding them, this... Uh, stands out a little bit and uh, yeah it looks looks very good so i'll uh, i'll leave it there for my uh, my review if you've got any questions about the helmet do let me know in the comments down below uh, if you enjoyed the video a like would be very much appreciated and subscribe as well if you want to see some more so thanks again and i'll see you in the next one